Boaters, boaters, happy 4th of July. This is Paulie, and once again, never do a podcast without my main man, Captain Buzz. Hey, Captain Buzz here. Happy 4th of July. Buzzy, how you doing? I'm, do- I'm doing I mean, I, I mean, how you doing? Well, we're, si- we're sitting on my boat down at the dock getting ready for the fireworks show tonight. That's, that's, that's a good thing. Well, absolutely. We're sitting here live in Chesapeake City. On the back of Captain Buzz's boat. Oh, my bad. You just cracked a nice, beautiful, fresh beer. Well, it's 4th of July. Well, here's the we're tied to the dock. We are tied to the dock. Once again, there is no drinking alcohol while running boats, uh, everybody. That's right. Don't be getting cray-cray. Buzzy, where's my cocktail? I I lost my cocktail. We have a man down. Man down. I'll tell you what. So, uh, you know, we're uh, we're here. in. It's 4th of July weekend. It's beautiful. Dude, the rain is over. Thank God. Yeah, that <laughs> if it well, rained anymore, I was gonna have I was gonna blow a head and gasket. You, and you said it, you know, we had a couple days of rain, but it is gorgeous out there right now. It is a beautiful day. Yeah, We're in like fantastic. the low, low eighties, humidity is down, sun is shining, and uh Captain Buzz's boat, we scrub a dub dub this bad boy yesterday. Well, we do, and we have that's one of our that's uh that's part of your uh detailers briefing about what, what we did and, and how well it came out. You don't but, say. But let's first talk about our boater's bites. Dude, boaters bites late. I'm telling you, yeah. bad, so badass dinner. Yeah, we had uh, we had my ribs, my my uh, baby back uh, pork ribs, and I had in the smoker for ooh, ooh, four or five hours. Um, but and and full disclosure, the rub I used was a little salty. Yeah, my blood pressure was about a buck and a quarter <laughs> over two fifty last night. Okay, I'm sitting here and I'm like, what is going on? And I couldn't stop power drinking water. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> So, well, but I, I, and I did promise now I'm going to go back to my own homemade rub. Uh, and I've got a couple of tricks and the next batch is going to be the bomb. It better be the bomb. You know, like, listen, don't reinvent the wheel. The recipe that you have been, the, guys, I love ribs. I, I, I truly do. But I never get them uh, because Captain Buzz over here has spoiled me rotten. And, you know, you went and changed the recipe. And, and it literally, I almost, I looked at him last night, guys, and I'm like, head or gut? Which one you want, pal? You're <laughs> killing me. I'm like, you, why would you mess with that? That's like using fake lemon juice versus regular lemon juice for lemon squares. Like, you know, there's just rules you just don't break. Well, you're right. And I, and I, uh, I got a smoker, so it's a little bit of a different cooking method. But the rub, I'm going, I'm going back. I promise I'm going back. And they're going to, the next batch is going to be. Well, your health, re- you know, depends on it. Why? There, buddy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> And why change a winning game? Although I've got the smoke, because I like the smoke flavor. And so this is going to be, they're going to be better. Right? Yeah, I, I had I, the Aja de last night. It was no good. <laughs> I'm sitting here eating Pepsids like they were M&Ms for crying out loud. I mean, you're killing me. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's and, the voters' bites for today, guys. And uh, we've got some Madelines, little little butter cookies. And they're delicious. Yeah, uh, you, I started my morning off with uh, a couple of uh, Sumatra Cups of coffee this Ooh, morning. Man. Dude, I'll tell you what. There ain't nothing better with a little Starbucks in the AM. I'm telling you. And with some cookies, you know, typical Italian breakfast, some nice pastries, a nice cup of coffee, a cappuccino, a nice espresso, and you're buzzing around like a madman for half the day. Cup of <laughs> Joe and a sinker. Cup of Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so let's get into the, a captain's briefing. Buzzy, captain's briefing. What do you got, Skip? Well, and, it, and you know, we've talked about PDFs. Uh, personal flotation devices on many occasions, but this one is just to keep them clean and maintained. And oh, so when we were scrubbing, had, when we were scrubbing this boat yesterday, I I took them all out, made sure that they're clean, the clips are good, I laid them out on the dock, but tell you know, right, dried so them off. Right. So tell them why. So actually, I have a great example of why you definitely want to keep those bad boys, you know, dry. Well, first of all, yeah, you don't want the flotation material to to rot and become ineffective right you want your people to want to put them on when they need them not this moldy nastiness right oh dude it was a <laughs> from under from down under after the one i did a boat yesterday holy moly Uh-oh. oh when it comes to nastiness and cleaning your compartments oh captain or my detailers briefing holy shit balls wow well, and, and another thing, you know, yeah, get, keep them clean, keep them dry, you know, pull them out once in a while, check the clips and everything. But one other thing that I do, if there's, if you have a pocket on your, on the life, on the life jacket or a, a clip, you clip on a, um, a, a whistle or a noise making device. Absolutely. So it, it makes sense. And, and I've got, I had a couple. Matter of fact, when the, when the Coast Guard uh, did my safety inspection, uh, he gave me a couple little whistles 
because he, he, I told him I was going to have some children on board. He goes, oh, put this on their life jacket. And, they, and it really worked. So it, just something to think about to, to add a noise making device to your to your PDF. So tell me about the detailers briefing. So yesterday, you know, with the 4th of July coming, my customers with the uh, coming with the 4th of July physically being here, you know, uh, as a detailer, we're in full board. Customers want their boats all nice and cleaned, ready for the 4th of July sure. holiday. And I was working on a customer's boat. Well, you did a couple boats this morning when you I did out. a couple boats this morning. <laughs> Guys, I'll tell you what, I never sleep. I, I've always, you know, there's nothing better than a nice, fresh, clean boat. Um, and I enjoy providing that service for my customers. You do. You but, truly do. You because you tell the story and, and how the how happy the customers are. And I know you you take a lot of pride. That's because pride, I'm an OCD freak. And when it comes to cleansiness, I lose my mind, <laughs> especially when it, you know, when it comes to being on board. Well, that's, that's why you're a good detail. Oh, my God. So uh, I, I worked on a boat yesterday and uh, she was, uh, whoa, uh -oh. whoa, son of a bitch. <laughs> I will tell you right now, I'm opening up compartments. I'm pulling out gear. And the biggest issue, like the first real biggest issue that I found was that all the PFDs were completely covered in black mold. Oh, no. And that fabric, even though that they're stored under, they're not being sun oxidized, they rot. Yeah. If they're sitting in water and it's a very moist area, they're going to rot. Yeah. And you do not want the material, the fabric on a PFD to tear in the case of an emergency. Absolutely. Right. They got to be solid and ready to go. I pulled out PFDs and I looked at the customer and I said, not for nothing, Skip. These need to go in the trash and you need to get updated equipment because they were disgusting. Uh, there was stuff growing in some of them compartments that I don't even believe that we've ever identified oh, yet. It's a, we're talking biohazard. We're Did, talking you major. Have the, uh, the, the hazmat team come in? Oh, well? my God. I'll tell you what. It was <laughs> disgusting. I mean, I was breaking out the bleach. And, uh, you know, guys, when you're working on your boat, bleach is only specifically used in, you know, so many applications. I see customers taking raw bleach and spraying down their white vinyl seats. Yeah, no. And make no mistake, it does a great job. But the problem is, is it rots out the fibers. It dries it out. You know, all the stitching that puts all of that together rots. So as the time goes on, it dries out. You sit down, they pop, they oh. break. So guys, be very careful. All boaters, just be careful what you're using bleach. Now, I bleach all my compartments, my bilge. Uh, I can't stand that stagnant water smell. Sure. And we went through that boat yesterday. Two guys on board a 27-footer took us almost four hours. Just to give it a fresh scrub, it was foul. Um, but but you, you've got a happy customer, and now you've got a, a customer where you're going to clean on a regular basis and keep well, it that he saw, Well, after he yeah. saw the boat, you know, he went from a bi-weekly to a weekly, you know. He's like, he wanted the boat now done once a week. He's like, this is beautiful, the boat. He comes down to a fresh, clean boat all the time. He's ready to go. And there's nothing better than that. And he likes um, to run. He likes to run. But, uh, you know, guys, at the end of the day, pull your PFDs out. Check them out. Get them cleaned. Uh, another thing, uh, yesterday we did a full scrub-a-dub-dub -dub on Captain Buzz's boat, and I had the, the privilege of scrubbing down your cockpit carpet runners. You know, that, I'll tell you, because I had done it before, and I've used a, you know, a, a, a household uh, carpet, you know, Nishki. scrubber. No, doesn't and, you do know, it. Going out in the garage and giving, and do, I've, I've tried everything, and I in the high traffic areas, I could not get the nap to come back up, and I couldn't get the... That, that that worn look. Well, but that's you did. You got it out. Well, the reason is, is there's commercial products that are out there that are specifically used by professional detailers that those chemicals you don't have access to. Right. We're buying them from an actual wholesale, not, not only from a wholesaler, but we're buying direct from the manufacturer for commercial products. Yeah. And they came out gorgeous. Um, I'll tell you what. But when I was scrubbing those cockpit runners, scrubbing them down, wetting them down, and letting the actual product work. People will scrub their carpets, whether they're downstairs. I agitated them by hand. Yeah, yeah. When you're shampooing a rug, people think that the actual machine that you're using is, they, there are bristles on there that do scrub it down, but they don't agitate it. Agitate your rugs by hand. And then you use a hot water carpet extractor or a shampooer to extract the dirt physically out of the carpets. But I let the chemical sit and work. Yeah, that 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 was an important thing that I learned yesterday when you were doing them. Right, that's the reason why your nap physically bounced back. Yeah, it did. Okay, they're softer. It, it the, the carpet responds better if you just let give the, the <laughs> carpets enough time to work. Let the chemical work. I even had our neighbor walk on. He goes, "Wow, he had bare feet 
you know, and he said, wow, these are, these are nice and springy. What'd They're nice and springy. <laughs> right. Allow the chemical to work. Give it some time. Let it sit. Let it penetrate. I blasted them off and we hung them dry in the sun yeah. and allow the water to physically run off. So guys, if you're doing any type of carpet shampooing, uh, whether they're your cockpit carpet runners or downstairs, I'm telling you, give the chemical time to work. Don't rush it. I know we're all busy. I get it. Let it work. But, you know, good things are, are, you know, come in time. It takes a little bit extra time, but the result and the benefits are incredible. Awesome. So uh, Buzzy's all happy. And I'll tell you what, your wife was loving it. They smelled good. They looked good. And they were more comfortable on the feet. They are. So what topics do we have today, uh, Cap, for, so, for our for our listeners? So we got we got a couple, and and one is, uh, and we hope this never happens, but it's COB or crew overboard. Okay. And so the first thing I want to talk about is prevention. You know, we, we, let's talk about not falling off the boat in the first place. Well, that's yeah, that's a good start of the day. And one would be, you know, having three points of contact. Okay. You've got two feet, or you've got two hands while you're walking, or you've got your butt and your feet. I mean, you got to be able to, you got, again, three points of contact. You want to hold on, right? The, either the boat's moving, got to be careful. And when always you, have your legs spread apart. Make sure that you actually yeah. keep your legs spread apart so you physically you have better balance. Right. You got to have more balance. And if there's a handrail that you're able to grab, points. three points of contact at all times, especially in rough water. Well, yeah. And, and an underway period. Uh, the other thing is when, you, when you're, you've got people coming on board and getting off, one at a time, right? You know, don't, don't, you're not going to have a mass exodus. One guy going off the bow, one person going off the stern. Everybody fall. Everybody goes uh, one, one at a time so you can watch what's going on. There's also, if you've got areas of your boat where it's used for boarding and you maybe, maybe it doesn't have any manufacturer's non-skid, add a little non-skid tape. Make that area a little bit safer. Yes, there are right? plenty of aftermarket options to be able to take a slippery surface and make it a non-slippery surface. Exactly. One of the other things is keep your cockpit uncluttered. Like sometimes I'll get on a boat and there's a, you almost can't see the floor because there's coolers and backpacks and 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 fishing gear and and bailing. Buckets there's crap and, all over and the place. You, you gotta be and in a case of emergency, trip. you're gonna trip. You have to navigate through your cockpit. You want to keep everything safe. And I get it. Like, I, you know, my boat's small. You know, my boat's a 28 and a half foot sport cruiser. I mean, it's not the greatest, uh, the largest size vessel under the sun. But when you walk into my cockpit outside of a cooler, there is no obstructions of any kind. That's right. Put it down below or wherever you can. To get Stow it, out it of the way. somewhere That's out right. of the way. Because if important. something goes wrong, believe me, having open space and be able to navigate safely is you, you're going to be a one upset puppy if you don't have that. You need to need to get to it quick. Um, check your railings and your and your fittings. You know, you know three point of contact. You, may, you want to make sure that what you're grabbing is actually adhered to the boat and, and in good shape. So check that once in a while. Uh, have have your crew sit in designated areas rather than on gunnels and and up on the bow. And you've got to have their seats designed, and that's where they should be. Like yeah, park your ass if you have guests on board. Correct. Don't be shy to be like, you know what, guys, we're getting ready to pull in the dock. Park your ass right here. Sit. That's right. And, you know, the other thing that you, you should do uh, is make a plan and practice, right? So if it's if it's just you or your wife or you're your partner or you've got people on board that you have on a regular basis, it's not bad to, to do a little practice on what happens or what everyone needs to do uh, when, when someone does, in fact, go overboard. Yeah, you just want to make a plan. And remember to wear that kill switch, right? If, you have, if you're at the helm and you happen to fall over, you want the boat to stop. So which is now when we it, talk about we talked about that. That's yeah, that's and that's a new mandatory thing. I mean, the United States Coast Guard and the DNR are looking out for that. You better make sure that if you fall in the qualifications that you have to have a lanyard connected. That's right. You better, or you're gonna get yourself a fine. Yeah. And so now, now we talked about prevention. So let's talk about what happens if somebody actually does fall overboard. And I'll give you a quick story. We're sitting on the back of the boat, we're tied to the dock. And uh, it was at night and we were, you know, um, socializing and a buddy got up to walk over to his boat and he slipped and fell off the swim platform. Right. Because he was hammered. <laughs> I can't deny I, or. Yeah, you can't agree or confirm or deny. Yeah. But the, he had a couple of cocktails. He, he was definitely not 100 percent on his feet and, and he busted his ass. So he, he went, went overboard. So it was cold out. It was April. And and. And I'll tell Ooh. you, and I, I had, I had my, you've heard me talk about throw cushion before. I had that throw cushion to him 
in less than three seconds. Yeah, but also, right, on his boat or on your boat, did you throw yours that you had on board? Yeah, we were on this. Okay, you yeah. were on your boat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I keep mine always out and about, whether it sits right at the helm or I have it clipped to the side of the window, like, always have right. that throwable ready to go. Right. By the time the throw, the throw cushion, cushion hit the water next to him, he stood up. Because that's, <laughs> there was that's, no water in the basin. <laughs> that's that's when we. That uh, was before dredging. That was uh, uh, BD before dredging, and so he just was super low tide, and he just stood up, and he was in the muck up to his chest. But he was, you know, we got him out of the water, and he lost an expensive pair of sunglasses. But uh, it, the, the idea is to get that throw cushion. If something you hear a splash, you throw that cushion, and if you're at the helm, make sure your folks know where it is and what to do if somebody goes over. Yeah, that's the communication that you want to have with the people on board. And and there's nothing wrong. I know it sounds like corny and cliche, but at the end of the day, confusion and chaos is the biggest problem in the course of an event, of an emergency situation. When people don't know what to do, they freeze. Well, and that's why my next point is to give them instructions, right? You're the captain of your vessel. You're responsible for your souls on board. When an emergency happens, number one, you need to know what you want to have happen and you need to bark out instructions. And and folks will, you'll kind of calm the situation down when they know that you're in control and that you've given them specific things to do. One of those things, first of all, throwing the float cushion, everybody knows where it is. You know, maybe you assign one person to not take their eyes off that person. Yeah, everyone, somebody needs to be designated to keep their eyes on they somebody that goes overboard. They not ever let go with their eyes to that person because, you know, you're at the helm. You've got to turn the boat around or whatever you have to do. There's traffic. Have one person assigned to that. Maybe you get one person ready to throw a line to the person in the water. Uh, maybe uh, one person gets ready to deploy your swim ladder if your boat is equipped. So, again, give folks something to do. And if, again, if you happen to be the person that falls overboard, you want you want to be able to wave your hand if you can, if you're able to, because if you're underway and well, if you happen to be in the, uh, the C and D canal on, the, on a day like today, there's tons of traffic, tons, and they're just running on plane and they, they don't they're not going to see ahead, see you, right? Yes, yeah, there's going to be a big problem. You you're going to have you a need prop to strike. Do your best to make yourself visible. And then we've got a couple of other things, you know. It, Cold water situations certainly make it a little different because then you've got potential for hypothermia and you've got to get them out of the water as soon as possible uh, and, and be prepared to to render first aid if necessary. So it's a, it's a good topic. You know, it's a, it's a rare occurrence. But if you do a little prevention and you do a little practice and you're ready in the event of emergency, things will go a whole lot. Better. So let's let's switch gears for a moment. Um, and I'll tell a story. On, on this boat, on my Sea Ray 420, uh, it's equipped with two air conditioning systems. And the one that does the saloon and the aft cabin, the evaporation pan drain was clogged. And so on a hot summer, humid day, it would generate, it was amazing how much you know condensation it would generate, but then it would spill over the pan and find its way down into my aft um, under the floor. And now, the good thing is it was, it was a single compartment with bulkheads. It didn't have a, a, a bilge pump because it was cut off from the rest of the boat. It's a storage, uh, but it would fill up with water. The good thing is it, it didn't stink because it was clean condensation water. It wasn't bilge or anything. Yeah, but the bottom of but your air conditioning water. Pan, well, every single air conditioner on board builds up that dirty muck from the dust and stuff like that. Correct. You know, so it tends to be a little bit nasty, which... You were talking to your next door neighbor on the dock today because his boat smelled like a dirty foot. <laughs> like, I mean, it was, uh, you know, I sat down with a cocktail. And he said with him. that. We didn't say No, that. he said that. But I mean, I confirmed it when I had a cocktail with him last week. I'm like, yo, Jeff, you know, love you, buddy. But, uh, you know, this bad boy smells like a dirty foot. Like, what's going on here, buddy? So we had to give him some tricks, guys, because there's nothing worse. And everyone's gotten on board somebody's boat. And you go down into their the cabin test. and you give it the sniff test. And it's like, whoa. I'm like, yo, buddy, we got ourselves, you know, a, a bit blue. of coat. Yeah, it's nasty. <laughs> so I, uh, what I did, well, first of all, I had to find, I, I could not see where the drain was. And I had, I tried a little camera. I tried everything. Couldn't find it. Then I realized uh, I followed the line. It would actually dumped into my shower box. So I was able to unclog it with a, you know, with a, like an electronics fish to get it, you know, cause it's a small, small tube. 
Got it unclogged. But you got to be real careful if you're going to put, yeah. you know, like if you're going to take a fish a fish tape. You don't want to puncture it. You don't want to be able to puncture it because not only that, you unblocked it, but then you just caused yourself another problem. Good point. So make sure that you're very careful if you plan on doing that. Yeah, that's a good point. That you don't puncture a line. And then I, then I, I bought, uh, there's a specific tablet. There's a company called Outland Air Conditioning. And it's, it's they call a pan cleaner tablet. Okay. And so now every year I drop a tablet into each one of the evaporation pans and it keeps down that black muck and keeps the drain clean. And well, it, because it, the it tablet works. itself is an it enzyme. Yes. It's an enzyme that physically breaks down bacteria and growth and anything that builds up keeps in that. So muck. it keeps every, the muck and the nastiness out of the evaporation and, pan. And it's worked, it's worked very well. It's worked very well. So you don't, right. So you got to be, you know, we're giving you a good philosophy for your cabin not to smell like a foot. <laughs> Always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be fresh. Oh, dude, I'll tell you what. I've cleaned some boats where the customer's like, you know, Paulie, do me a favor. We'd like our carpet shampoo downstairs in the cabin, you know, pull up the, you know, the, the carpet runners and that stench in the air. And the worst part about it is it permeates the fabrics. Everything yeah, on soft, board, everything soft. Any type of soft goods on the boat will suck that up. It just absorbs it like a sponge. Because behind most of your soft goods and your vinyl all has a cushion material. Yeah, that is nasty. And once that smell gets physically into that, if it permeates it, you're never getting that out. So let's 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 talk. Let's let's switch one more gear. You switch any more gears and I'm going to get lost. No, no, no. You're going to like this. Because I know that, you know, for all docked up, you've been out on the street talking to, survive, to, talking to a service provider. Oh, that's right. Okay. I, I, I like it, this switching gear. I knew you would. How's it going? It's going fantastic. We, you know, we started in Delaware. We are adding m so many new providers uh, to the platform. Uh, and, and, and the most common response that we are getting is that this makes too much sense. Nice. The boaters are extremely excited about what we are building and how we're going to connect them to service providers. But there, there's, I mean, we are talking to dealers, the excitement that's out on the street, whether it was marinas. Um, I had one fiberglass a gentleman in Rock Hall. He was awesome. Um, <laughs> we, we were at Gratitude Marina. Okay. And Gratitude Marina signed up on the platform. The service manager looked at, you know, looked at the company and goes, this is fantastic. Terrific. We love what All Docked Up is doing. Terrific. And he said, Paulie, we love it so much. Our fiberglass guy, one of our subcontractors is out there shooting gel code, doing a repair on a customer's boot. Uh, he's like, you got to go talk to him. All right. Go out, talk to him, show him the company. And he says, um, you know, it, it's me and... And Bonnie and we're out there and, you know, uh, he looks at me and he goes, are you the owner of the company? I said, I said, I am one of the owners of the company. Yes. I said, my business partner, Jeff Halber is in the office and I'm out on the street. And <laughs> he's like, you know, is this your concept? This is your design. I said, yeah, absolutely. And he looks at me and he goes, damn it. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> that's great, that's great, that's great, that's great. But he signed up on the platform as a fiberglass uh, you know, as a fiberglass repair guy, his company is locked and loaded. And uh, the greatest part about it is, is with all the years of experience that I have buffing out fiberglass, working with fiberglass, I was physically looking at his work and oh, I nice. we're vetting everybody. We're vetting everybody. Like oh, there's, a, there's a lot of people that want to be on the platform and we have a strict criteria to some extent. You know, we want to make sure you do excellent work. You have really good reviews. You're fully insured. Right. You know, you, you that's important. Right. You pass a criminal background check. Like we, we want to make sure we're working with stout individuals. Um, and I was looking at his work. I physically looked at what he was doing and the that's job great to be able to see. Exactly he was working on a 420 C Ray Sports Sedan Bridge. Okay. And I'll tell you what, massive puncture on the forward uh port side bow. Wow. And it was a hard hit. It was a hard hit. And I didn't get all the logistics of what physically happened. I don't think he knew either, but right. he knew we had to fix it. And uh, he did beautiful work. I sat there with him for an hour. We signed him up. We got him on the platform. We got him all situated and qualified, Terrific. sending his copy, Terrific. his certificate of insurance. So the buzz is awesome. We're really, there's so many providers that were really, really excited about what we're doing because we've created that digital platform, the one-stop shop for a boater 
to physically be able to go on the all docked up platform and find whatever they need. It's it's awesome. It'll be full concierge when we finally get it all up and ready. The the idea that you know we, we're doing these podcasts, we're talking about safety and making making a, a boater's life uh, uh, more enjoyable. Sign up, sign up for an account on all docked up. Right. If you're listening to the podcast, anybody who's listening, go on the platform, check it out. And uh, there's info at alldockedup.com. Because we'd love to hear from I want to hear your responses. Yeah. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Our goal here at All Docked Up is to not only provide the boater with the best service under the sun and make their weekends that much better, but working with the service providers, large-scale marinas, independent subcontractors that make the wheel go round. Yes. Make this happen. We, we, we want their We want to work with them. I Correct. want your feedback and what can all docked up do for your 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 organization. That's right. I just want to keep building the platform and 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 Jeff Halber, the uh you know the president of All Docked Up, the sharpest guy I know. I mean he is on fire. And we literally all day long strategize and think about, you know, every day we speak, Paulie, what did you hear on the street today? And then we incorporate that into features that we can put on the platform to be able to help everybody. Yeah, we had that meeting the other night and we made some changes immediately and and it will make it easier and more more productive and uh, um, easier to understand for the service providers to sign up. So 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 we're making changes as we hear this. As we hear it. I mean, we we spoke to an independent service provider who does sailboat repairs and and does you know make sales and and does repairs and he said paulie well what i would like to see is a b and c we had those implements done and changed within 48 hours that's awesome we went back the following day to collect the certificate of insurance and i said because we're going to be back in the area and i wanted to show him he's like you guys move fast i said we got to move fast it's got to get done yeah so from time to time our podcast uh, audience You'll hear us talking about the platform and the company because that's that's what we're in business to do and make it easier for you, as well as providing safety uh, and and things to make your boating experience more enjoyable. Anything so, that we could do to teach anybody to have a safer, happier, healthier weekend. We're all about it. We're passionate about it. Everybody with the companies has. And happy. go on info at alldockedup.com, guys. That anybody who's listening, go on the platform and send us emails of topics that you want to hear. Don't be shy. Like mm-hmm. any feedback, boaters, um, I don't care if you're That's a, a marina point. operator, if you're a boater, talk to us any way that we can do it. Anything that we can do to make this better, we work night and day. We pick up the phone, we answer emails, we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, Buzzy, um, we're at the end of the podcast Fantastic. and I am ready to refresh the cocktail on Fourth of July, I'm uh, gonna... we got we're, we're, we got some cornhole going on. We got we got food. We got a barbecue. We got fireworks. It's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be an awesome day. So everybody, please be safe over the Fourth of July holiday. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Be happy. And uh, this is Paulie signing out on Six Eight, buddy. Captain Buzz standing by on Six Eight. Standing by, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much. <laughs>